Hey guys, this is One Shot Zero Kills or David, and this is my second video in my making your own Minecraft mod tutorial. All right, in this video, we're actually going to get get started on making our own mod. I'm going to be showing you how to change uh, block settings and how to change uh, slime spawning conditions. In the next video, I'm going to actually be showing you how to make your own blocks and items using Mod Loader. But for this uh, tutorial, all you need is Minecraft Coder Pack. So go to Google and search that. It should be the first link. Uh, scroll down to MCP release information. Alright. Uh, currently, you're going to want to download this one right here. Version 4.3. Uh, all that you want to do is you want to download the one for whatever your Minecraft version is. So I download that one. So just click download. And then download that. Alright. Uh, once that downloads, uh, you're going to need to extract those files. So I'm just going to go to where I saved it. Alright, sorry. I'm just navigating. Alright, so downloads. Alright, so here it is right here. I'm going to open that up. I use WinRAR, but you can use whatever you want, like 7-zip or whatever. So highlight all of these, and then click Extract to. And then I already have a... No, I don't. So I'm just going to make it a C Minecraft Modding. Click OK, and then I'll, I'll extract all of these files to there. So let's go to... Let's X out of that. And now let's go find where that was. Right, Minecraft modding. All right, now we have all this stuff here. And now what we need to do is we need to put all of our Minecraft uh, like bin and resources in there. So go to your. I mean, uh, so we need to do that. So go to start, run, percent app data percent. Press OK. Alright, so if you have Windows XP, it should uh, just be in this app data folder. Otherwise, you have to go to roaming and then dot Minecraft. Alright, then copy your resources and your bin folder. Press Control C. And now we're going to go to jars in our MCP folder. And then just paste the bin and the resources in. And that's going to take a little bit to copy. And then after this, uh, we just need to take uh, the minecraft.jar in that bin folder that we copied, and then also paste that in this directory. Alright, so I'm going to do that now. So go to bin, copy this, minecraft.jar, paste that here. Alright, now what we need to do is, we need to decompile that code. What we have there is compiled code. Now we just run decompile.batch, I mean bat, oh, it's a batch file. And then this is going to take a little bit of time. What this is actually doing is, it's taking the compiled code and using uh, someone else's uh, program, it's actually decompiling it into source code, which we can then edit. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be editing it in Eclipse. So if you haven't seen my other video, uh, video one in the series, then you're going to want to go view that so you can learn uh, what you need to download for Java and Eclipse. Alright, so it finally finished. Alright, now you'll see that if you go back to your MCP folder, if you go to SRC or source, Minecraft, net, Minecraft, and SRC again, you'll see that you have all of the Minecraft uh, cla uh, Java files or classes. Um, so what you can do is you can either open them just in like regular notepad or if you actually this is a or you can actually open them in Eclipse which is uh, definitely the preferred way which is what I'm gonna do alright so now we go to Eclipse uh, just click on Eclipse now what we need to do is that we need to change the Eclipse workspace so it actually knows to use all that source code and the resources so we go to file Switch workspace, other, browse, and then you have to search for your MCP folder. Mine was called Minecraft Modding, and then click on the Eclipse, on the Eclipse folder, and press OK, and then OK. 
and now we're good okay now what we can do is we can actually edit the Minecraft files or source files and change them how we please what I'm going to be showing you how to do is to like uh, change the property of, the, of a block so you could change it so it gives off light or it doesn't get off, give off light or you could also change it so that uh, it has a higher resistance or lower resistance or it's easier to break with a pickaxe or whatever I'm going to delete the server package uh, because I'm not modding the server right now so I'm just going to go to client src net.minecraft.src and now uh, the first thing I want to show you how to do is so how to edit block so go to block.java now scroll all the way down and you'll see all of this code over here okay so I'm explaining to you what all this does alright you see set hardness uh, and then uh, this right here is a floating point it's basically just like a decimal that's what the F stands for if it's a floating point so it is like decimal digits it is like 1.0, 1.01 1 .01 and all that alright so set hardness uh, that I believe that's how difficult it is to break the block uh, see what else uh, set resistance is how much resistance it has to like TNT and explosives uh, set step sound is uh, what sound plays when you step over it set block name and you pass like a string or characters to that um, all that is is it's setting the name internally that is not like the tooltip text this is not what you see like uh, when you put your mouse over it this is just in game name and all the other stuff you really don't need to worry about so I'm gonna go to redstone torch active and I'm going to change the light value from 0.5 to 1 what this means it's going to have the same light value as glowstone now alright so I'm just gonna click save and you could change whatever you want like you could make obsidian softer I look for obsidian I'm just going to do control find. So control F obsidian find. All right, there it is right there. So you could change uh, like the resistance. See how high that is? That's 2000. That's how resistant it is to TNT. But you can always like, change the hardness to like 5. So it's easier to mine. Alright. Um. You can always change this if you want it to be like actually be able to explode, but whatever. Alright, now we're going to go to entity slime. We're going to we're going we are going to slide all the way down to Ken spawn here. Alright, now let me explain this to you, okay? This just gets the current chunk and uh this thing return or whatever, it's if it returns true and the slime can spawn, if it returns false then the slime can't spawn here. So first we have get slime size equals one or world object that difficulty setting is greater than zero. What this means is if the slime is a small slime or we are not on peaceful, uh, then a slime could spawn. But then we have all this code after it. So random dot next int equals uh, random dot next int ten equals zero. What this does is it returns uh, like a pseudo random, like a fake random. So it's really close to being random, but it's not actually because the computer can't actually generate a random number. But that's besides the point. So this generates from 0 to 0 inclusive to this number exclusive. So this generates from 0 to 9. So that's like a 1 in 10 chance. And then what this is right here is, what that right there is, uh, this uh, gets a random object which is what that is from the chunk and I uh, that it basically does the same thing uh, next in 10 it's a 1 in 10 chance that the chunk can actually spawn slimes it's important to point out though that uh, this is the same every time you call it on the same chunk so if, uh, one chunk if you call it on one chunk 
and it uh, returns zero, that it's oh, that chunk is always going to return zero. It's not going to change. So basically, that is why only certain uh, chunks can spawn slimes. So if you just got rid of that altogether, then every single chunk could spawn a slime. I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change it less than or equal to one. So now every two in ten, uh, every two in ten chunks, or every one in five chunks, can uh, spawn a slime. Or you could change it to like every. Uh, half of the, so like half of the chunks get spawned them. You can choose whatever you want. It's just important to point out though, if you did like a greater than ten, uh, then it's that's not that's never going to be true because this returns zero to nine. So uh, this is never going to be true. If you did like a greater or equal to zero, then this is always going to be true. So you might as well just have deleted this condition. But I'm just going to make it uh, less than or equal to 1. So there's a 2 in, five, two in 10 chance. And now you'll see this thing at the end. Pause y, that's position y, is less than 16. What this means is that it has to be below 16. So if you change this like 32, then it has to be below 32. But if you change it uh, to like 64, it would be less than 64. Otherwise, you can make it greater than 64, so it can only spawn like on the surface or in like caves on the surface. But I'm going to change that to uh, less than 32. D. And in case you're wondering what the D here is, it's just like the F from before. But this is a, uh, it's like a floating point but it has higher precision than an F. So that means it can hold more data, okay? All right, so now if you want to run this in Eclipse, which you actually can, you right click here, you go run as, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. You have to go to net.minecraft.client, go to minecraft.java. Now, now you can go to, or right click on that little thing right there, go to run as Java application, and then it'll actually launch Minecraft for you. Alright, that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I will go over how to use Mod Loader and how to make your own blocks and items and other special stuff like that. Alright, see you guys. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, and all that. Bye.